Greetings, welcome to Nature's Bounties. Here we are again, beautiful things of nature to help us remember that God loves us. Let's ask his blessings before we go on today. Let us pray. Our dear Father in heaven, we thank you very much for your goodness, your love and your care. Give us more understanding in the things of nature that we may live life in abundance of health and goodness and goodwill and be a blessing to others. This is our plea in Jesus' name. Amen. Welcome. In my quest to know about how to live naturally, I visited a few lifestyle centers and one of these ones is the one situated in Alabama in the United States of America. It was founded by doctors Calvin and Agatha Thrash. Today they are no more there, but the institution is still going on. And many are still being blessed by the ministry that this institution has been of for so long, for so many years. What I want to talk about today is actually cued from their writing. And it's very important that we understand this very well because this is key. Many people say, what is the way to a man's heart? They say his stomach. <laughs> yes. But that's not what I want to talk about, no. I'm not talking about the way to the heart through the stomach. I want to actually look at the stomach itself and how we can take care of our stomach. Because indeed, in the long run, the way to our well-being, the way to joy and happiness is in the stomach. Because if the stomach is well, the heart, talking about the heart in terms of the joy of living, is well, very well indeed. What are the problems that usually will come from a deranged stomach? One of the common ones is referred to and identified as peptic ulcers. Peptic ulcers. Many people suffer from peptic ulcer today. Why is that? It's because there isn't enough information or knowledge or seeking for how to know how the stomach works. Because if we understand how our stomach works, then we know how better to take care of it and to maintain it when it is doing well. So that we know which one is which, when it is doing well and when it is not. Dr. Agatha Thrash identified some common causes of peptic ulcer. These are alcohol, aspirin, and vinegar. Alcohol, aspirin, and vinegar. Some people take a lot of this more than others. But in whatever percentage it is being taken or quantity will depend on how bad it affects the intestine in terms of the membrane that surrounds that supports and coats the entire gastrointestinal tract. These substances, what they do is that they irritate the lining of the stomach and so they cause what is called gastritis, an inflammation of the stomach. How do they work? What do they do? How do they get there? Well, it's not just by magic. There are foods that we eat that causes this stomach irritation. What are they? They are identified black pepper, red pepper, spices, sweet, soft drinks, sweets and soft drinks. Some call it candies. Caffeinated drinks. These are the produce or the substances that result in the irritation that will result in peptic ulcer. I have met several persons that have consulted with me about how to help the ulcers in their gastrointestinal tract. What will cause the acidity, high acidity level, that will cause this irritation that will eat into the lining of the stomach? Because we know that there are acids that are produced and pu put into the stomach by nature that will help the breaking down of our food. Why is it that at the same time, 
we have high acidity that will cause irritation of the lining of our gastrointestinal tract. A simple rule given by this ministry institution is that we should eat without drinking at meals, drink without eating. That means when we eat and we drink at the same time, we over dilute the natural acid that the stomach produces to break down our food. You see, there isn't a grinding machine inside our stomach to grind these things that we eat, the substances, whatever it is that we eat. There are chemicals that are produced into the stomach that will help to chemically break down our food. So many people think that I can just swallow my food and drink water to push it down. It does not work that way. That is the wrong thing to do because that is just a negative uh, impact that will be given to the stomach. Now, when there is so much liquid with our food when we eat because we drink as we eat, I said it will over dilute the digestive juices and then what will result is that the food will not be broken down properly. And when the food is not properly broken down, it ferments, it spoils. Then it produces its own fermentation gas. And that is why some people, after a little while when they have eaten, they belch and what comes out uh, smells bad because the food has been fermenting in the stomach. It's not breaking down, it's not digesting, it's not moving. There are specified times for the food to come into the mouth, pass through the stomach, into the small intestine, to the large intestine, and downward towards where the waste product will be excreted. If the time takes longer than it should, then fermentation happens. It is this fermentation the gas from the fermentation that is one primary cause of peptic ulcer. There is a definite time to the emptying of the stomach. All the impurities that should go out of the body should go at the right time. But when they sit down there, they cause havoc, they cause problems that will result in poisonous substances building up in the gastrointestinal tract. Then a lot of energy is spent in trying to get rid of these poison because the body is fighting and is fighting so hard and so well to get rid of anything that would destroy this house that we are living in. And when that happens, energy is transferred from the work of the brain to the stomach. Therefore, a young person sits at the desk or a mature person sits at the desk. Energy is being expended to get rid of the poison and the load of food that is not getting digested in the stomach and the brain can't work. It cannot do the task that it's supposed to do. Enough blood is not going to the brain because the stomach is taking all the energy. So there are many things that can happen when we have undigested food in the stomach. And that is because of our choices. I cannot help but keep on reminding myself so that I can remind you too that everything that we do in this life is as a result of our choice. Whether we're going to be in the best of health will depend on our choice. But when that choice is helped with good education, then there'll be better choices to be made. And that is the reason for this program. So that we can make better choices that will help us to have good life, healthy lifestyle, choices that we can make uh, from. <music> Dr. Agatha Thrash wrote about a centenarian, a centenarian, who at the age of 150, you will believe that? Well, that's what is written there. And I know from this experience of what is said about this centenarian 
who lived at the age of 150, and then she was asked, you are living so long. Tell us, how do you live? And one of the things that this old lady mentioned was that, I like to read it. She said, I never ate when she was not hungry. And she chewed her food until it became a cream in her mouth before she turned it loose. She will not eat when she's not hungry. That's one point. When we eat at regular times, we'll be hungry at the regular time. But if we eat all the time, we won't really get hungry. And sometimes when we feel like drinking water, we'll think it is hunger and then we eat some more. But when we have regular times at eating, our body is well regulated and then it discharges its duty very well. But the second point that Dr. Agatha Thrash mentioned in this uh, write-up is that she will not turn the food loose, that is, it will stay in the cage of the mouth and the chewing will continue until the food becomes creamy before she will then swallow it. This is one experience that I love to share with people. At my ministry, I often have individuals who will be possibly up to six or seven or eight at the dining table. And I like to watch when they come new, how they chew their food or not chew their food. Some may stay long, but it's just because they are talking. <laughs> and many, they put the food in the mouth, mm, it's gone. It, uh, mm. the, it, the spoon is picking up and it's right in front of the mouth. Just pick it up, put it in, down. Pick it up, put it in, down. They turn the food loose too quickly, swallowing the food. In fact, somebody told me that it is in our culture. We swallow our food. Well, generally, we all swallow our food until we learn that it is not the best thing to do. And it is not. We need to chew our food and drink our water at the right time. Do not drink water with your meal. Very important rule in the taking care of the stomach. Any complaint that we have about uh, the problems that our food is giving us when we eat it or what we are having as pain or discomfort, anything coming that we are complaining about, most of the time stems from not chewing our food properly or drinking with our food. That is also the same reason why our food should not be watery. If we have porridge, it should not just be water. And that is another reason why fruit juices, smoothies are not better. It is actually good that we eat the fruit. Of course, in the case of illness, juices are necessary. But when we are not sick on a regular daily basis. We should chew, we should eat our fruits, eat our vegetables, and not turn it into smoothies and drink all the time. Some people, health enthusiasts, who are just beginning to learn about health, then they read about smoothies and they start smoothies, smoothies, smoothies. No, it's not best for our health because it is in the mouth that digestion starts. So when we swallow our food too quickly, without turning it in the mouth and allow saliva to mix with it and also a mandibular muscles to work on it to trigger our brain to produce the digestive juices that goes into the stomach, our food will not be properly digested. So in caring for our stomach, this is primary point to note very well and to keep in mind. Few people chew their food and therefore few people have good health. It is said that only 5% of the total population in any community are in good health because only few people follow the rules of healthy living. So in the taking care of our stomach, it is very, very important that we note this properly. We should take care of our stomach in such a way that we will not have to think about it. Now, I have another 
short story in this to tell. Dr. Agatha Thrash said, as she was preparing to be a medical student in medical school, and then they have the autopsy to work on. You know, in medical school, you have to work with cadavers. That they began to investigate and to look at the stomach of the corpse. And there was one thing that was common. Most of them had undigested food still sitting in their stomach. <sighs> She observed this with her friends and classmates, and it was noteworthy. Was trained as a medical doctor, and she lived and served in helping others to overcome diseases of all types at the ministry that was going on at the Uchipines Lifestyle Center because she saw that these problems are the ones that are the underlying foundation of the problems that come in different areas of the body. Because if the food that we eat, of course we choose the best food and the best food are plant-based foods. Animal foods are not the best for the human body. They stay there for proper digestion, the stomach is that phase where the breaking down happens. But as mentioned, it starts from the mouth. Especially carbohydrates. If the juices are not mixed with the carbohydrate food in our mouth, they get to the stomach, they ferment. They cannot be properly digested again. Therefore, when we swallow this food, they sit in our stomach, they are not broken down. Whenever there is problem in the stomach, there will be problems all over. I say all the time, my late mother, if she's asked the question when we were young, mother, I have headache. The next question she will ask is, when did you go to the toilet last? And then you look up, um, he said, okay, good, go and take this portion of this particular mixture that she has made to help you move your bowel. And then after the movement of the bowel, the headache is resolved. So what's the connection between the stomach and the head? Well, there are nerves that connect the two because once there are dirt and poison in the stomach or in other parts of the GI system, then they will send these blood to the brain and or they will deny the brain of some things that it should have. And then the body will tell you, I have a problem. Please help me with a headache sign. Well, one can make the choice and go and get an analgesic and just tell the signaling point, be quiet. And so it keeps quiet. But the problem is still going on. So when we take enough water, first thing in the morning, before breakfast, at least an hour or two before breakfast, no drinking of water with the meal in the morning. And if it's a fruit meal, fruits have adequate right proportion of water to fiber, to vitamins, to minerals, and other things in the fruit. That is why fruit is a must food for everyone. I read an article in Newsweek, listing the causes of cancer. Number one cause is eating less than four servings of fruits every day. I'm like what? What does it take to take the fruit? Well, it does take some effort because most people are not eating it. And when people ask me to guide them as to what they can do naturally to reverse a health problem, the first thing that usually will be shared with the person is go on a fruit fast. Then begin to eat fruits and grains, whole fruits, whole grain as your breakfast. 
And many will tell me, can I rather eat cabbage and cucumber and all the others? And I'll say, no, eat fruits for breakfast and eat vegetables for lunch. Fruits are the number one food that will help the stomach to be in good health. And one point is very important, lest I forget. Don't eat the fruits and the vegetables at the same meal because many people have stomach problems. And when that happens, there is more problem created. Why? Fruits digest at different rates with different digestive juices. Vegetables are slower in digestion. So when the two are mixed together in the stomach, there isn't the good cohabitation, if I can put it that way. And then fermentation will happen. That fermentation is what is the number one cause of the problems with the stomach for most of us. Our foods are not properly digested. There are many reasons why they are not. It could be the time that we eat them. For instance, if we eat it at night, then our food will not properly digest. We should not eat late, especially if the food is the one that is longer to process and to break down in the digestion. Therefore, eating at regular time is very important. Choosing the right type of food is key and then not drinking water and then making sure we drink the water at the right time because if we don't drink the water at all also there will be problems. Also, when we finish eating, it's not the good time to take a book and read. No, it's not the good time to go and take a seat in front of the television to watch. No, it is the better time after meal to roll up the sleeves get to the sink, do our dishes. Don't drop the dishes there and say, oh, later I'll come and, I'll come and wash them after, before I get to bed. No, get the dishes done. That's a mild exercise after food. Get the dishes done, clean the kitchen up. Then if you are able to do that quickly, if there is not many dishes to clean up and to tidy the kitchen up, get outside, under the shade, take a little walk. Move the muscles, especially when we take a walk, we move the muscles of the back of our legs and it directly helps our digestion, especially for those who already have any health challenge, any especially of the lifestyle diseases like high blood pressure, diabetes, any of those ones especially, because they are the common ones that we are coming across today. And that is because the health of the stomach is not right, it's not good. Once we pay attention to the health of our stomach, many things in our body will get back to normal because they are being fed with the right type of food that is benefiting to the body. It's very important. We should not eat also when we are angry. When we are angry, it's not a good time to eat or when we are exhausted. It is not good health for our stomach to receive food when anger or exhaustion, any type of stress, negative stress. It is also not a good time for the most exciting news to be broken at the table when there is really hilarity and joy and all the rest. All of these extremities will affect the digestion of the food that we are eating. So dining time should be the time when things should be calm. The conversation should be such as everyone can be involved and not talk when there is food in their mouth, of course, so that there can be a good social interaction and eat with joy and appreciation of what God has provided. But if it's a time when all of the bad things happening, all of the problems are discussed, then our food will not digest properly also because our emotion affects our stomach and for the experiment that has been done with a cat had electrodes attached to the stomach and then pinched the cat tail and found that the digestion just stopped until the cat is able to calm down again before the churning of digestion resumes. So it happens for us as human beings. It should not be at table 
that daddy will come home and say, yes, daddy, welcome, sit down. Do you know what happened today? Well, let daddy eat first. <laughs> mommy, oh, did you know that this happened? Well, let mommy eat first. And children, why did you do this at this time? What happened? No, let them eat first. Let's have time that we can really enjoy the refreshing of eating time. That will help our stomach to do its work very well. And this is how we can take care of our stomach. We should not forget that I started off by stating that there are common things that will cause us ulcer, peptic ulcer, which is one of the primary things that happens in the stomach. Alcohol, aspirin, and vinegar. Well, we know where aspirin comes from. That is straightforward. We know where alcohol comes from. That is also choosing to take what is in the beer and the wine and the rest. But how about vinegar before I round up today? Well, we can buy vinegar and unfortunately today, some are saying that vinegar is good for health and they drink it. Please, I'll end on this note. And this is an important note. Do not drink vinegar. It is of no help to the health. Some will say, yeah, you drink it. Well, some reactions happen because your body is trying to fight. And then it seems as if there's some improvement in the problems that is being dealt with. But wait a little bit and continue to drink. Vinegar is a strong acid that should not be in the stomach at all. And so I want to know and will continue to learn. Ah, if you have been using it, research a little bit more and see that vinegar is not medicine for the stomach at all. And no one should open the mouth and put vinegar inside our mouth, nor use it to soak our salad or mix it with other things that we, are, we put in our food. The acidity level of vinegar is such caustic to the stomach walls that it destroys the stomach. And therefore, I continue to pray that Lord will give us all wisdom understanding to know how to choose what is best for our bodies and keep it in the best of health for our lord and savior so then till we meet again the lord bless you bye for now <music>